Hello everyone, and welcome to another video on this channel. As you saw from the intro, we have a serious problem in the office. The biggest culprit of this is that I need a powerful laptop, and this pretty much leaves me with one option, gaming laptops. All the CAD work, programming, video editing, and the occasional gaming, it requires a lot of muscle from the machine. This is the reason why traditional gaming laptops are so bulky and heavy, but bulky and heavy doesn't work for me, as I'm constantly on the move. Luckily, nowadays, there's also the thin and light gaming laptops, such as the Asus Zephyrus G16 that I have. Compared to a normal gaming laptop, this is extremely thin at just around 16 millimeters. Being this thin, the fans inside need to work extra hard, which leads us to the main problem. Whenever I'm doing anything a bit more intensive, the laptop sounds like it's about to take off. Like you could be playing the flight simulator without any sound on and still be immersed in realistic jet engine sounds. And my idea to solve this was to just slap some big old fans on the back and see what happens. And while trying to find places where I could find some fans, I remembered that there are already products that do this, and they have been sold for as long as there have been laptops. After doing a bit more research, I found out that these coolers don't really work that well, as most of the air actually goes around the laptop and not through it. To combat this issue, some smarter people have figured out that you can put a seal around the laptop, and this will actually force all the air to go through the laptop and not around it. But these things cost an arm and a leg, and take a lot of space on the desk, and I don't have the money or the space to accommodate these things. So, this pretty much leaves me with one option, DIY. I started by planning out what I need from the project. The space on my desk is at a premium, so I'm actually utilizing these monitor arms on which I have two laptops on both sides of my screen. On the right side I have my personal laptop, and on the left side I have my work laptop. This gives me the first item on the list. It needs to be able to fit the monitor arm that the laptop is currently on. After taking some measurements, I figured out that I can use two 120mm fans on the sides and it still leaves space in the middle to attach the monitor arm. For the fans, I got these ones from Arctic, as the price to performance ratio seemed to be very good with these. They're extremely silent and they're very slim, so it actually makes it very easy to fit in this project. Now I had the measurements and the fans, so I could jump into Fusion to design the enclosure. The cooler was bigger than what I could fit in my 3D printer, so I had to split it in half and figure out a way on how to attach the two halves. I printed the enclosure out of ABS, and this actually gave me a very good chance to try out acetone as a bonding mechanism. So what acetone does, it actually melts the ABS a bit, I mixed some bits and pieces of ABS with acetone to create the ABS slurry. Before I put the halves together, I need to put in the fans as they won't fit otherwise. To combine the parts, I put a bit of ABS slurry on both sides and then I press them together. And as it melts the ABS, this creates a one solid piece of plastic that's completely inseparable. Now with this, the main part of the enclosure is finished. We have the fans attached, and it's one solid piece of plastic. The next thing we need to do is to attach the arms that will hold the laptop from the front. I have two of these hooks that will hold the main weight of the computer. Later on, I'll attach one more arm in the middle that will house the screen and the rotary encoder. As the brain of the operation, this time I'm gonna be using an ESP32 C3 Super Mini Microcontroller. These come in many variations, but in essence, they are very cheap, small computers, which are perfect for these kind of applications. And for the power, I will need 12 volts to run the fans and 5 volts for the ESP32. I'll be using this nifty thing to get the power. This is a USB-C trigger board. In here, I can choose what voltage I want to draw from the charger by just soldering the corresponding pad and then I'll just use a step-down converter to get the 5 volts to the microcontroller. Then it's just putting in a rotary encoder to adjust the fans manually, and a switch between automatic and manual modes, and an OLED screen to show the temperatures and fan speed.
After putting it all together, you're probably left wondering, how do I get the temperature readings if I don't have a temperature sensor? And that's where the software comes into play. On the computer, I've created a program which will read the temperature of the CPU and the GPU. This will send the data wirelessly to the ESP32 via Wi-Fi. The ESP32 I've configured as a small server, which will take the temperature values in and adjust the fan speed automatically according to those. If I want to adjust the fans manually, I can just enter manual mode and adjust the fans like that. Now with the programming done, we can run some tests and see how it works. So we're going to have a look at some synthetic benchmarks, starting with the 3D Mark Time Spy. And the scores are basically identical. Okay, not great, but let's move the FPS scores then. And this doesn't look good. It's practically like copy and paste. Maybe in Time Spy Extreme? Nope, practically identical here as well. You know what? Screw that. The results are pretty much identical across the board. The only difference being in the actual sound levels, which was 55 decibels on the stock fans and 34 decibels with the cooler. That's a significant difference, but it's not good enough. That was disappointing to say the least. The cooler would work in such a way that the computer fans would not start spinning on a small load. But under heavy load, it was still spinning fast and making that annoying high-pitched noise. On top of all of this, adjusting the fans didn't do anything. The fans were so quiet that I could just have them running at 100% all the time. So all of the other electronics, the adjustments, getting the temperature data, adjusting according to that, it was just completely obsolete. I would just run it at 100%. But now the concept has been proven to work, so the only natural next step is to actually make it useful. I went and I bought some bigger fans. This is you. And this is the fan that she tells you not to worry about. Of course, now with the bigger fans, these wouldn't fit in the casing without modifications. So I needed to actually redesign the whole casing. I made some improvements from the first version. Now we can move on to building the 2.0 version with the bigger fans to see if we can actually make a significant difference in the cooling performance.
Finally, after all that building, we can do some testing. And first as a disclaimer, these charts are like presentation from Apple. They have no beginning, no end, and no correlation. They're just to provide a bit of visual. And now looking at the time spy scores. We can see that the new cooler gives us about a 7 to 8% better performance on average here. And with the FPS scores, we get a little bit of a difference, but it's nothing huge here. A 5 to 6 FPS difference. And then looking at the temperatures, here we can see the difference with the new cooler. So it automatically does a bit of overclocking. So even with the higher scores, we can get 73 Celsius. And if I disable the overclocking, we can get down to 66 degrees Celsius. And then moving on to times by extreme, we get a bit better scores here, up to 10% better performance. And the same thing with the FPS scores here, a few frames here and there. And then on times by extreme, the temperature is actually higher with the new cooler, but this is mostly likely due to the overclocking that's happening there. Looking at Cinebench, we have 20,000 on the stock cooler, 20, 23,000 with the first cooler and a bit over 23,000. I think this is very CPU heavy, so there's not much overclocking happening there. And then the biggest bomb, so with the stock coolers is 55 decibels and with the first cooler 34 decibels. And now with the new one, I can get 29 decibels. This is as silent as a, as a library, you, you cannot even hear it. So this means that the goal to make the computer quiet was reached and surpassed. Now we're talking. As you can see from the tests, this really brought a big difference. If I have the fans running at full speed, I could have up to 15 degrees Celsius lower temperatures, which is nice to have, but I think the main benefits are twofold. The first thing is that I can have the fans running at a lower speed, so I can have equal temperatures as before, but with lower sound. And the second benefit that I get out of this is now I have a bit of room for overclocking. And as you can see from the test results, I got up to 10% better performance with the fans running. So this is the project finally done. It took over a month of planning, building and filming. But in the end, I really feel like it was worth it. Especially with the second iteration, I got some actual real world benefits out of it. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you think the project is cool and you would like to see more content like this in the future, you can subscribe. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.